What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my desk setup. So I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I just haven't had the time to do so. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the desk setup that I use every single day for work, productivity, YouTube, all the kind of stuff and tell you uh, what works and hopefully you can get some inspiration from what I have going on over here and uh, maybe buy some of this stuff for yourself and um, you know make a setup of your own. I have been someone who has been obsessed with having an aesthetic um, desk setup, uh, one that looks really good and uh, feels really good for productivity because I feel like working in an environment that looks really nice and um, one that makes you feel really good is really good for your creativity and um, your overall just, um, you know, just how you feel and um, it can really influence uh, your productivity and how much work you get done when you sit to work. Um, for example, so for any of those who are at NC State who are listening to this video, that's precisely why you go to the library to study because the uh, it's because the ambience is so nice and uh, you really like the the vibe and uh, the the aesthetic of the place and so it, it helps you focus. So I've tried to create something like that at home, which helps for. Um, you know, work, uh, university stuff, uh, YouTube, personal projects, um, whatever else it is that I have going on. And uh, yeah, I uh, really want to show you guys this video and uh, also want this to be like a kind of landmark on the internet. So as I can keep showing you guys my desk setup as it gets better year, year after year, because this is something um, I deeply care about, really care about. But yeah, let's get into it. So I was actually planning on cleaning my entire desk before I shot this video. But instead, I decided to shoot it in its raw form. So you kind of see what's happening on my desk every single day. Um, so, okay. Here we have a MacBook Pro, 13-inch. Uh, this is an Intel MacBook Pro. Um, two years old at this point but still still runs like a charm um coffee cup most important thing on this table um granola bars which i have a habit of eating but yeah let me show you the main stuff first so highlight of the table is this curved uh 27 inch curved dell monitor with colors like so usually when I'm working on a Windows laptop, I like to have this really nice um, sort of aesthetic looking live wallpaper in the background. So this one is one that's based Japan based. It's based in Japan. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so it has a, like a clock uh, and all these like floating uh, Sakura petals uh, and everything. And if you were to play music, it actually lights up depending upon the whatever it is going on. So it, it lights up depending upon whatever is um, going on right now, if you were to like play the music tab. So that's really cool. I think it gives it a, a really nice vibe. Um, so I have a Logitech webcam. Up front, this is a 720p webcam. You see me using this in some of my videos. It's not the best quality, but it does get the job done, and I think it looks pretty decent. Um, along with the webcam, on the side, we have this microphone that I use for some of my videos. So this is a $50 microphone. Um, this is not the most expensive microphone, but it sounds pretty decent for the price I paid for it as a pop filter, which I don't really use because I don't think it matters that much. Um, but 
this microphone is what I use uh, when I'm sitting at my desk recording. So you can, in, in case I'm like sharing my computer screen and stuff. And uh, so this is what um, you're gonna hear me talking through. And the audio quality is decent. Uh, it's not as good as the iPhone 13. I'm recording this on right now, but you know, it gets the job done when like trying to record and stuff. And so, okay, um, I'll, let me let me get to the peripherals first. So this is a it's it's dusty. <laughs> I didn't clean it, but this is the HyperX um, FPS RGB. Um, this is a mechanical keyboard with silver switches, silver kale switches. So um, really nice kind of tactile feedback and stuff. Um, I use this for programming and like pretty much everything because you really get that like satisfaction when you can like smash the enter key at the end of something, you know what I mean? And not have to worry about like breaking it or like even the, the escape key, it's like so tactile and it's just really nice. Really robust, well, uh, uh, really like well-made keyboard uh, uh, overall. It's RGB so you can like change the color schemes and stuff so it's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, I just like to keep it at like a default white. Um, this is the Logitech, I think, 302, I don't know, whatever, it's, it's a Logitech mouse, it's pretty cool, it has like front and back buttons right here, so you can use these to like navigate, uh, navigate through like Google Chrome or like Edge, just go back and you should, uh, just click this, oh sorry, this is like DPI, these are the front and back buttons, so you can just like go forward, go back, like the previous page, next page kind of thing, it's like pretty cool, um, and then for sound, I use, oops, Dusty. These are the Sony, I think, XB700s on ear headphones, but top of the line. Um, best that money can buy. Well, in Sony's lineup, I think this is the best on ear headphone in um, Sony's lineup currently. Um, these have the best bass I've ever heard in a pair of headphones well keep in mind i haven't like tried every single like top of the line like xm4s and uh all the on over ear stuff i haven't had all of that but these things are so good i would not even consider buying something more expensive or like higher than this because this just like hits the spot so perfectly it's just amazing you can blast music in these all day long and just feel like you know what I'm saying? Feels good. Okay, so we, well, on the topic of sound first, I think the most underrated and one of the highest valued things on my setup right now is this thing here. This is a Google Nest Mini. Um, I essentially use it as a Bluetooth speaker a lot of the time, but I also ask it to like, you know, like, you know, hey, Google, set me an alarm. It's going to trigger. God damn it. 2 p.m. Set. Shit. Okay. But, you know, essentially, I use it to, like, um, set alarms, ask about the temperature outside. One of the most underrated, very cheap and highest ROI things, like highest value for money things on my desk setup right here. Um, I use it, like, for, like, music all the time. So, like... This is a single room that um, I stay in. And so <laughs> I use this for like audio and just background music and like stuff like all the time. It's like pretty much playing. Uh, really, really nice piece of hardware. Um, if you're not sharing a room with someone, if you're staying in a single room, or even if you are sharing a room with someone, um, highly suggest you buy one of these <coughs> value for money. Okay. And then over here, we have an iPad. This is an iPad Air. Um, and so I just use this thing for like taking notes in class. Um, honestly, for the price I paid for this, my current workflows do not use this piece of tech enough. Maybe in the future, I'll start editing videos on this or start some other workflow, which needs, uh, the iPad. But well, for me, the main purpose of this iPad is the fact that I can take notes with this pencil on PDF presentations. I think that's really useful. So I'm not using this a lot right now, but it's still a really, it's really great for like when you need to like use it and stuff. So yeah, hopefully in the future, I make more use of this thing. 
I have three coffee cups on my table. Okay, that should tell you what, you know, <laughs> how addicted I am. Okay, this thing. This is a beast. So this is the big chunky machine that runs most things. This is a Dell G3. It's pretty old at this point. It's almost, uh, almost four years old, I think. So this has 16 gigs of RAM, has an i7, and has a 1050 Ti from NVIDIA, four gigs. So it's still enough to play old games, I think, or, you know, with the stuff that's coming out, like, relatively um, old games, and it's still powerful enough to do most things, like pretty much everything I have on uh, my workflow over here. But this is Windows, so some stuff just doesn't work, and I just don't know why it doesn't work. So, for example, when I use Google, so this is extremely, like, a, it's, like, almost stupid, right? But when I use Google Chrome on this thing, it just doesn't run. Like, Google Chrome just doesn't run. It's slow, it's laggy, there's, like, issues here and there. It's, like, that's why I use uh, Microsoft Edge, and that runs just fine. I don't know what's happening in the back end, but yeah, it's weird. But this thing is basically a powerhouse for all of the heavy applications. And um, well, I'll put this out on the internet, but it's like, it's strange, but this is a 13 inch MacBook Pro with uh, an i5 and eight gigs of RAM. This is a Windows PC with an i7 and 16 gigs of RAM and, and a graphics card. When it comes to programming workflows and heavy programming workflows like uh, Unity or <clears throat> Android Studio or uh, Game Dev in C++, this actually performs a lot better than that does, right? This excels in uh, portability, sound, just, you know, having everything like work out of the box without having to connect everything and like really great battery life, really nice screen, all that stuff. Like I'm not saying that it doesn't have a nice screen, but it's like, it's like that sexy kind of do anything everywhere kind of thing, really nice in, in both keyboard and all that stuff, uh, you know, but when it comes to like really, really like heavy stuff, like power intensive stuff, like this is the thing that comes in clutch like this is the this is the beast this is like the big bull that you have on your side that's like pulling things when like you don't have any other like horsepower left right so this thing can churn through a lot of stuff more uh frequently or, or like faster than like that can so currently my editing workflows uh for youtube are on this because you know imovie works great but i may switch it to this at some point of time for like adobe premiere something like that um who knows so you know use this for everything it's pretty cool uh it's a very old laptop but yeah i think it's great uh windows isn't going anywhere anytime soon so yeah i think that's really uh <clears throat> you know it's just like something about um, having uh, having a PC, I think. So, yeah, um, love this machine. Um, under the machine, um, I have a laptop cooler. You can't really see it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this is just for keeping the... Uh, the so, um, this is for keeping the temperatures down. So... Uh, let me turn it on really quick. Uh, I think it's this one. There we go. So, um, the Windows laptop, uh, well, I guess most gaming laptops have this problem. If you're actually playing games on them, they te they tend to start throttling very quick so they overheat because it's a very thin form factor and then um, they're going to begin to like throttle and the performance will go down so that's why it's very important that you have one of these like laptop coolers it's essentially like a giant group of fans that run and just blow air into the vents of your laptop so this thing is actually really cheap i got this for like 20 bucks on amazon it works great it's extremely silent can like change the colors and stuff so that's 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 neat um and so i have this so that my laptop doesn't begin to like 
buzz with the fan noises and stuff because this thing does have like a pretty noticeable fan it's like pretty loud so um i keep this just to keep the performance of this in check when i'm like doing something very heavy or when i feel this thing heating up you know so uh, having a laptop cooler is key i think especially if you're on like a heavy windows laptop so um <clears throat> that's there other than that i think i have a bunch of uh fake plants on my desk simply for aesthetics uh Bought them for like really cheap, I think 15 bucks on Amazon. They've, they've done great. Um, helps give the, the desk like a pop of color, you know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> kind of like helps set the vibe. Um, two extension cords. Yeah, I know the cable management is the best, but I just can't be bothered. Okay, so like no one pays me for this shit. So like whatever. Um, US extension cord indian extension cord you know have that stuff set up here um so right now you you can see that i have a windows laptop connected to you know a keyboard and mouse and stuff like that and, and it works great but you're thinking okay what about your macbook right um if you have a monitor that's you know this cool then why don't you connect your macbook to your monitor right and here's the thing I do do that. Um, I'll just show you what the workflow is like in a second. And um, there's a particular reason why I want to show you that. Okay. Okay. So when I use my MacBook, what I usually do is I keep it on the table like this, right? So it's going to be on the table and then hold on. And so it's going to be connected to my monitor like so, right? And so what I, what I do is usually I'm going to have this keyboard as the main keyboard for my MacBook, right? So I don't use an external keyboard for this laptop and I also don't use this mouse this is just here because it used to be there I just kind of removed the keyboard and so this keyboard is I don't know what it is it's like the old butterfly keyboard or whatever that Apple came up with so this keyboard is the one that I use with the MacBook and um, with this uh, this kind of setup and so the the reason I do this is because number one I feel this setup is one of the most efficient ways to use a MacBook with a monitor, right? So I have tried keeping this on this and using a keyboard and a mouse with the MacBook. Doesn't work. It's, it's less efficient, right? Uh, the main reason being the trackpad on the MacBook is like gold. Like Apple has come up with some, I don't know, some holy technology that lets you like do this and this and this and this and 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 this and where's, where's my mouse and and this and this and this and whatever else right it's it's just so convenient that the trackpad is the only way you should be using a macbook or a macbook pro air or whatever or, or even an apple computer i feel like it's just like it's just so good right and so this completely negates the need for a mouse and i think the apple mouse isn't even that great of a product i know it has a touchpad and stuff but i don't even see it being that useful you know i could just you know i mean i would have you buy a separate trackpad to use if you actually like you know, something like that um you know and so i think that th this um <clears throat> Uh, I think that um, having the trackpad is like key. And so I think this kind of setup where um, you're effectively just using uh, the keypad that the, your MacBook has, which is, you know, a good one and the trackpad and your monitors are aligned like this. This is probably the most efficient way to use a MacBook with uh, with a monitor right so you don't even need the webcam because this has a webcam and you're, you're sitting right here so you can kind of like um just 
have the lighting correct and uh, the keyboard works great it's efficient stuff like that you know um, this is how I usually use the MacBook um, like I'm this kind of guy that either I switch from a Windows workflow all the time um, where I'm just completely on Windows doing everything for my daily work and I just use MacBook for like YouTube videos and like editing YouTube videos and stuff like that or I'm using the MacBook for everything and then I don't touch my Windows laptop for like a month or something like that. So I'm, I'm kind of like that, but then that is, I guess, influenced on what I need the laptops for. Um, when I get hit with a workflow where my MacBook is not powerful enough to, you know, run that stuff or it's like lagging or like, you know, crashing or whatever, I'm going to, you know, switch to Windows and, you know, roll with that. Um, it's just that... The MacBook is far more portable and it's way easier to uh, to work with. And it's just, um, you know, like you can take it everywhere with you and, um, um, you know, you can just like, you know, you, you could use it on your bed. You can just kind of just fold it up and take it with you wherever you want. It's like super portable, super nice, that kind of thing. It's like everything in, uh, you know, um, in, in one package. Whereas this thing right here, this chunky boy is well, it's it's basically a desktop replacement this thing is so heavy that i would not consider taking this laptop to me with work simply because my bag is so heavy when i have this and then um where's the charger and then this brick of a charger with with the laptop and because it, it's just like adds so much of weight so I'd usually um, just use the just like use the MacBook when I need to like go outside or like travel and stuff like that. So it is dependent upon uh, my workflows and what I'm doing at the moment. But the reason I wanted to <clears throat> show this out specifically is because I wanted to put you onto this if you did not already know it. Um, you don't need to like buy a keyboard and mouse for your MacBook. Just have a monitor and just connect it like that. Oh, and so if you're wondering what, what this is, this thing right here is called a monitor riser. It's a, it's, it's a fancy way for saying it's a small table to put your monitor on. You know, you don't even need something like this. You could, I don't know, man, just make something work. I didn't have something like this for like a long time. And I actually didn't even buy this. Someone gave it to me. I think uh, on my first year of college or here in the US, I was actually putting my monitor on a pile of books or like an Amazon box or something simply because I didn't have like anything to put it on and I wanted the height for like um, ergonomics. Uh, so one of my friends, she was like, hey, uh, just use this instead. This is like better and she gave me this. So uh, that's like really great. Um, so yeah, this is a monitorizer. It's just like a small table to keep your monitor on. Um, you can use whatever you like. You don't like literally need something like this. And so before I close out the video, you guys might have noticed there's a light coming from the back of my monitor, right? Which is really cool. Think about it. It gives you this nice kind of aesthetic looking like um, it's like a backlit, backlit monitor and it like... Um, like it makes your monitor look really expensive, right? So, okay, spoiler alert. It's not actually the monitor that has a light on, on, on the back end. Um, this is a ring light I bought from Amazon. So I use this when filming uh, videos on my desk for YouTube because, you know, the lighting and stuff. Um, I don't really have, like, sort of lighting on this wall, so it helps to, like, have one um, near my face. But I bought this and I realized, hey, when I'm not... So when, I, for, so when I'm doing YouTube, it's usually, like, just, like, propped up like this or, or something. And, you know, and I'll, and I'll have my camera somewhere over here. So I, I mostly film on my, on my smartphone, um, which is an iPhone 13. So, but I'll have the light somewhere there and the phone somewhere here. So, you know, you can, you guys can see me, um, with this background, but when I'm not using it, <laughs> I kind of just put it on the thing on the back right here, the stand. And it looks like my monitor has a backlight. Just super sick. 
because my monitor now looks like it's like all fancy and like sexy and expensive and stuff when it's like actually really not but i think it gives my room a really nice aesthetic um especially at night when the lighting is like not uh i mean there's like sunlight here right now but if you know if that wasn't there it'd be like uh kind of you know kind of like dark and you just have this thing uh with the with the background and uh yeah it's a uh, it's a very gamer like setup. Yeah, that's uh, that's been it. Hope you've enjoyed this video for my desk setup. Um, I've been studying and doing project work and stuff like that because the semester is about to end, and uh, I just thought I'll take a break and film this because didn't really feel like doing anything else. But yeah, um, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video and if you took some inspiration from my setup leave a like subscribe uh, comment down what stuff you'd like to see in the future um, let me know what you think of my setup and um, I don't know post pictures of if your own if you have some like really cool setups or like even if you don't or if you have recommendations um, for, for stuff that um, you think would be cool or any other setups that you'd like me to check out and stuff like that, um, leave a link in the description. I spend hours on Pinterest looking at this kind of stuff and just kind of trying to see like what looks cool, what looks not, what's actually productive and like what's like uh, aesthetic and um, stuff like that, you know um like was like really uh useful at the end of the day so let me know if uh you have um anything cool like that um uh, any ideas um i will leave a link in the description to all of the equipment i have on my desk uh for the setup in case you guys took uh, inspiration and uh you want to do something like this um yeah but well, that's it this thing is my pride and joy I'm a content creator and a programmer and all of that. So where I sit to work for like 90% of my day is, uh, is extremely important to me. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to stay safe, stay well. I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, though. Bye for now. Have a great day.